Nirupama Dutt in conversation with Patrick French. Appropriately, um, th this is um, a panel that will interrogate the place of religion in society and discuss the Buddha's challenge to Brahmanism. Um, quite appropriately, this session is presented by the Hindu. It's part of the Hindu series. Um, I'd just like to, I, most people probably know Patrick as a biographer, as a historian. Um, you'll know him for his uh, authorized biography of V.S. Naipo and his recent book, India, A Portrait. Um, he's, of course, won many awards, and people will see his writings in many magazine journals. Patrick is going to lead this, so over to you, and thanks again to all of you. Uh, it's uh, a very great pleasure to be uh, back in Jaipur, and I have to say, I think this front lawn stage is uh, my favorite one of all. There's something about the way it sweeps around uh, to the buildings. <laughs> so just to briefly introduce um, everybody, Nirupama Dutt is a poet and a translator and a journalist of, of passion, courage, uh, commitment, uh, her anthology of poems, Iknadi Sanwali Jahi, A Stream Somewhat Dark, uh, received the Punjabi Academy Award. And I think you translate from Hindi, Urdu, and Punjabi. Punjabi. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, Kanche Laya is somebody who perhaps needs no introduction as well. Uh, <coughs> he's been a, a very significant commentator for a long time, perhaps best known for the book Why I Am Not. Uh, Hindu, and also until recently he was professor and head of department of political science at uh, Osmania University. He's also the author of various other books, including Buffalo Nationalism uh, and God as a Political Philosopher, which is part of the inspiration for uh, today's session. Ajay Navaria, uh, as well as being an author who looks at things in a slightly different and new way when it comes to uh, Dalit identity, also has a day job as the assistant professor at the Hindi department at Jamia Millia Islamia uh, University. And I'd also like to introduce on his shoulder uh, his publisher, Julie Pretzel, who is going to be very occasionally now and then uh, translating remarks that Ajay may make in Hindi. But he did say to me beforehand that providing I speak very slowly and clearly, he would understand most of the, uh, the questions. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to try to, to stick with that. Um, so th this is of its nature a very um, broad topic, just to re read it out again. God as a political philosopher, Dalit perspectives on Buddhism, the idea of religion as a guide to political philosophy is, of course, one which can, in one sense, apply to any religion. It's perhaps best known as part of uh, the idea of uh, a way of running an Islamic state. But if you go further back in history, the idea of a Christian state, a Hindu state, or a Buddhist state is also deeply embedded in the history of all sorts of uh, different nations and peoples. And in a way, what we're touching on here is a specific idea developed by uh, Dr. Ambedkar and others as an adjunct to the freedom movement, the idea that the discrimination against depressed castes and classes could perhaps be pushed aside by uh, the application of Buddhism, or in some cases, the conversion to Buddhism uh, of Dalits. Now, this is a, a hugely varied and contentious uh, area, and it's also a topic which has evolved and changed, I think, and is still altering uh, today. So, the way that we're going to begin is that each person will speak for just two or three minutes on the subject. We'll then discuss more generally between us, and then we will open up the dialogue to the floor so that we can have more uh, interaction. So, Nirupama, would you like to start um, and if you want to, you, you could read a few lines on the, the theme of conversion. Perhaps it's also worth saying that Dalit conversion is, is not necessarily to Buddhism, but that is perhaps the best known 
public form. Uh, and, 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 and of course, it, Dr. Ambedkar himself converted in a very large and public ceremony, I think only a few months before, before he died, uh, which, which had a huge uh, symbolic resonance uh, in India at that time in, in 1956. So please. I come from Punjab, and I'm here because of my translation of the autobiography of a Dalit poet, a very well-known Dalit poet, Lal Singh Dil, as well as my biography, which is still under publication of a, another Dalit activist, Ban Singh. So I have been probing deep into um, the Dalit lives, and I would like to start with a few lines of a poem by Lal Singh Dil. He says, my country has another face, another set of people, where a settlement, half hungry, half asleep, retires for the night and counts the stars to soothe aching limbs. So this is the other face of the country, the other set of the people, and it is also their spiritual needs. Uh, as I went through the autobiography of Lal Singh Dil, who belonged to the Chamar caste, the Tana caste, lived in Samrala, a small town between Chandigarh and Ludhiana. You know, he was drawn towards the Naxalite ultra-left uprising of 1967. But all along there is also uh, a need to be ex uh, accepted by some religious fold, spiritual need, and the way he is treated, although he, uh, the family is converted to Sikhism, in Punjab we have this uh, sort of uh, hidden apartheid, as you would say, because the dominant religion is Sikhism and that does not recognize caste. But in practice it is not so. In practice, uh, the ills of the Hindu caste system are very much present in the Sikh and in Punjab the Brahmin is absent and the tussle is between the Dalits and the land-owning Jap Sikhs. So he, uh, the small incidents which Dil recalls are uh, as a child he's in school and he paints a portrait of Guru Ravi Das, uh, a guru recognized by the Tana caste and he shows uh, cobbling tools and shoes at the bottom of the picture because Ravi Das was a cobbler and very happily he takes it to the teacher and the teacher looks at it, uh, upper caste teacher, and laughs in derision and so do all the children. Next we have another experience of Dil as a child. He enters a pool of water near the well where the Jatsik children are bathing. And it is very tempting in summer and he goes into it and the Jat boy drags him out and thrashes him and the grandmother of the uh, poet has to go and apologize to the Jat Sikhs that her grandson, you know, made the error of uh, stepping into that pool. And then we have him in college when he's in love with a girl whom he claims to have kissed. When he escorts her to her house, uh, the girl's mother offers him a cup of, a tumbler of tea in a metal glass. And after he has drunk it, she throws the tumbler into the fire to purify it. And in the, uh, this story is the constant, along with his uh, commitment to uh, Lenin and moving forward, Mao, he wants to, the need for, for God. He says in matter of faith, how sweet are these words dedicated to God. I wish my last words would be, I have complete faith in you. I want to steal this line and dedicate it to the revolution. After this I'll come to Dil, uh, Dil's conversion, which was not to Buddhism but to Islam. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Kancha, would you like to say a few words now? Well, see, the, uh, this book, God as Political Philosopher, was, was my PhD thesis actually. But when Ambedkar wrote Buddha and his Dhamma, he essentially uh, structured it in terms of the spiritual discourses that Buddha did and he converted himself to Buddhism. But when I was being taught as great ancient thinkers uh, only in terms of uh, Kautilya and Manu, 
And there was this Hindu nationalist uh, paradigm reimposed in the modern period uh, during the nationalist period. But Ambedkar was struggling with uh, bringing back Buddhism to nationalism. Then I thought, you know, is there, is there no political philosophy with Gautam Buddha at all? Now then I, I went into the whole uh, ideology of Gautam Buddha. Now I found that phenomenally he was also a thinker who thought of state, who thought of philosophy, who thought of casteless society. He was very critical of the Brahminic life and uh, he thought of uh, women's uh, freedom after certain discourses that you know, uh, took place, debates took place between him and his stepmother called Mahaprajapati. See, the, the whole thing is that today, if the Hindu uh, nationalism is uh, reframed on our own essence, I think that is again restructuring caste in a, in a very modern form. Now, if only Buddhism was ba brought back to India as a political, social, ideological school of thought, and the nation state is built around Buddhist ideology, you know, in this book, I, I try to establish, I think we, we don't have to look for more of a Marxist socialist framework where there is a lot of uh, Buddhist socialist ideology within that in relation to equality, in relation to uh, abolition of certain, uh, you know, caste structures, I mean, deeply rooted caste structures and also the notion of justice that Buddha structured in, 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 the, in the language of Dhamma is phenomenally superior to that of Socrates mm. and that of Plato, uh, uh, what he uh, inscribes in Republic. So that is uh, the essence that you know this book carries. Uh, I, I'll come back to okay. some of the uh, uh, basic elements later. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Kanche. Kanche. Um, Ajay, would you like to say a few words? फ्रेंड्स मेरी बात को कुछ हद तक अनुरूपमा जी ने कह दिया है और कुछ बातें आई रेस्पेक्ट द आइडिया ऑफ कांशा आइलिया बट आई डोंट एक्सेप्ट इट आई थिंक कि अगर बुद्धिज्म को ही हम मेन रिलिजन के रूप में लेते हैं तो ऐसा हम बहुत पहले ले चुके हैं अपनी हिस्ट्री में बहुत सारे स्टेट्स बुद्धिज्म से ही चलती थी और वहां भी अनटचेबल्स के साथ वही बिहेवियर था जो हिंदुइज्म में था अगर आपने जातक कथाओं को देखा हो और ये बात मैं डॉक्टर अंबेडकर के रेफरेंस से कह रहा हूं उन्होंने कहा कि इवन बुद्धा ब्लीज इन रिबर्थ अगर आप बुद्धिज्म में आत्मा को नहीं मानते हैं तो रिबर्थ होगा किसका शरीर तो मर गया जल गया एक रिलीजन के तौर पर कोई भी रिलीजन हम बहुत सारे देशों में ऐसा देख रहे हैं कि वहां रिलीजन बेस्ड सब कुछ पूरा सिस्टम है तो क्या वहां सभी को जस्टिस मिल जाता है ये जो रिलीजन बेस्ड सिस्टम है इसको मैं पसंद इसलिए नहीं कर पाता हूं चाहे वो हिंदुओं का हो चाहे वह बौद्धों का हो या मुसलमानों का हो क्योंकि वो आपकी डिग्निटी को सबसे पहले आपकी लिबर्टी को खत्म कर देता है तो अगर ऐसा है कि बुद्धिज्म में जाने से एक अनटचेबल को रेस्पेक्ट मिलती है तो ये तो बहुत अच्छी बात है मिल जाए मगर आप जो बातें सब कह रहे हैं वो थियोरी है आपने बड़ी अच्छी बात की बंत सिंह जो है वो इस्लाम में चले गए मैं कह रहा हूं कि इस्लाम में जाने से क्या होगा इस्लाम में जाते हैं तो क्या वहां कास्ट सिस्टम खत्म हो जाता है वो वहां भी वही उस तरह के अलग एक ग्रुप बनाकर रख दिए जाते हैं तो इसका मतलब कन्वर्जन से कोई प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व होने नहीं जा रही है इन 1956 जो डॉक्टर अंबेडकर ने मास कन्वर्जन किया हो सकता है उस समय की जरूरत रहा होगा मगर अब तो 
who converted, who had converted, they are also now again scheduled caste, new Buddhist. There is, there is a category in administration, new Buddhist, in bracket, it is written his or her caste. Then, Buddhism, Buddhism embrace karne se hua kya? Aap kisi, is puri subcontinent mein, in the whole sub subcontinent, Indian subcontinent, koi bhi religion hai, wo caste se uh, detached nahi hai. वो कास्ट के साथ है अब देखना यह है इसीलिए माफ कीजिएगा मेरी यह किताब जो इंग्लिश में आई है इसका नाम ही मैंने रखा अनक्लेम टेरेन सब इस पर क्लेम कर रहे हैं यू बिकम बुद्धिस्ट यू बिकम क्रिश्चियन यू बिकम मुस्लिम मगर अगर ऐसा ही होता तो हिंदुओं का सबसे माने इस सब कॉन्टिनेंट का सबसे अच्छा धर्म तो सिखिज्म है अभी निरुपमा जी ने बताया कि पंजाब में क्या हाल है और वहां तो ब्राह्मण नहीं कर रहे हैं okay. वहां तो ब्राह्मण नहीं कर रहे हैं ओके सो आई एम जस्ट आई एम गेसिंग दैट मे बी अबाउट अ क्वार्टर ऑफ द ऑडियंस डोंट स्पीक और अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी सो जूली डू वांट टू जस्ट वेरी ब्रीफली सम अप सम ऑफ द पॉइंट्स दैट अजय मेड देयर सो कैन कैन यू हियर मी अम अजय अम वुड लाइक टू पॉइंट आउट दैट um he agrees with some of um kanchala's um uh the the things that kanchala may have raised and also mm. some of the things have been said by nirupama da but he believes that um if you take buddhism as the main religion and if you try to establish as the the straight state religion even that wouldn't solve the problem um he he says that it has happened before buddhism has been a state religion before and untouchability was practiced practiced even then and he also raised that perhaps dr ambedkar's mass conversion was called for by the times but um so um it was called mass conversion was called for in those times but what happened to those untouchability uh, un untouchables who who have converted then they are now new buddhist they are now called new buddhist it's an official uh category in the census but in brackets after the words new buddhist the the original uh untouchable caste is also shown Okay. And, okay. and he also raised that um, if you if you look at all the religions in India, perhaps for equality and untouchable um, and untouchables, the Sikh religion would be the best. But Nirupama that just said that even their untouchability is uh, practiced. Okay, so and this it is, is not uh, practiced by uh, upper caste Hindus. But by the follow of Sikhism. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I think this is is historically a very clear problem that when people uh, convert in order to remove themselves uh, from the disadvantages of of a lower or scheduled caste, that many people, particularly uh, in rural communities, do not recognise that shift. In other words, they continue to regard them in the same way. Nirupama, do you think there is a a way around that do you think it is connected to the religion you convert to uh, if you convert to sikhism is it inevitably going to involve being captured within caste why is it for example that even uh, dalit muslims both in india and pakistan still suffer that same disadvantage uh, this is a this is a very sad and um, a real fact about conversion uh, islam does not recognize caste but, but. Uh, in practice all the lower caste converts are called as we know musalli and uh, we have uh, he's not here this time but hanif mohammed hanif has brought it out in his novel a lady of alice matti mm. uh, similarly we have in um, christianity the lower caste who convert remain a different sect altogether 
and the same would go to Islam. In fact, I have Dil telling me. But you know what I would like to add here? Uh, we, if we are not talking in terms of states, the major state religion or the political aspects of uh, conversion, but what did give Dil solace is that, you know, coming from the very um, unhappy background of Hindu religion, where he cannot enter a temple, where no one will tell him what the religion is, here there's someone teaching him, teaching him the uh, teachings of Prophet Muhammad. He's sitting with others who, are, who belong to all kinds of castes and having the meals with them. So it is somewhere, it gives him dignity and a feeling of belonging, which he was not able to get in the Hindu and Sikh folds. Um, another very interesting thing about Sikh religion today is that the Gurdwaras are caste based. One village will have a Gurdwara for the Jat Sikhs, one for the Chamas, one for the Kabir Panthis. So there was a small incident near Kapurthala in Punjab in the Doaba region that there was one uh, Gurdwara for the Jat Sikhs. Then the Tanas Chamas went up to the Shiramani Gurdwara Prabandak committee and said that, you know, we are, we are not respected there, our women are not respected there, they laugh at us. So we need a separate Gurdwara, which was given to them. Then the weavers, the Kabir Panthis, were the next to go. So the SGPC authority said, we can't have, you know, every Gurdwara by caste in um, a village. So the Kabir Panthi said, okay, if you will not give it to us, we will convert to Buddhism. And the third Gurdwara was also granted to them. So there is a tussle between the various religion, religious groups to have more numbers. From 56, Buddhism was a little remote to Punjab, but from 56, <coughs> Ambedkar made a special effort and big Buddha Vihars came up in Punjab, which continued till date. But by then, Chabars, the dominant uh, Dalit community, they had recognized Guru Ravi Das as their uh, guru, their mentor, spiritual leader, and they had their own little uh, dera, places of religion. So there is a tussle between the Buddhists and the Ravi Dasis, Dasyas, whether to convert to Buddhism or to remain within the Ravi Das fold. And as far as the Dal, uh, the you know, the Chulas, the, the lowest of the low, who converted to uh, Sikhism, they, they were very happy with this new identity. And their hero is Guru Gobind Singh, mm. and followed by Bhagat Singh. For them to, you know, changes have to come within that fold. For them to expect them to go out, now Ban Singh, the uh, communist uh, singer and activist, he does not know of Marx or Lenin. He knows of Guru Gobind Singh and he knows of Bhagat Singh. So if the changes were to come within, from within the fold, uh, it would be easier for them and more acceptable than to go to a new path. So yeah, it might be worth mentioning that in, in Britain today, we have caste-based Gurdwaras also. They've been translated to, <laughs> across the seas. Kancha, do, do you think this question of caste and conversion is related to which religion you move to. In other words, does Buddhism of its nature give you a potential greater freedom if you're someone who converts? And also, can you touch on to what extent is this a regional uh, issue? In other words, would it be very different in, say, Andhra as against uh, Punjab? No, see, all over the country, the whole question of conversion is a very serious issue. Now, after Ambedkar converted to Buddhism, more number of people, Dalits, and even a section of tribals and OBCs got converted into Christianity. It's a, it's a huge process going on. Now what we need to fundamentally understand is, you know, as Buddha himself dealt, uh, dealt with the whole thing, uh, though I called him God, he was not God, he didn't even believe in God at all. And I, I metaphorically put that name. Now, in Buddhism, he granted the right to religion, the right to spiritual uh, living itself. Whereas in his own time, the Vedic religion was not allowing that. And even today, 
in, in those valleys, those tribals, those o OBCs who have gone into Islam, there is right to religion, to read the book, to become the pastor in the church if it is a Christian, mm. or to become read Quran, or be equal in the mosque if he is a Muslim, yeah. or if he is a Sikh, there is similar, he can touch the Guru Granth. But in Hinduism, they can't read scriptures. Mm. Now they can't enter into the... So there is no right to religion as such. They can't become anything. I tell you, what about the secular state? Who actually in ancient India structured a notion of secularity? I'll just read a small passage from Buddha's own statement. While talking about Samana Brahmins, that is the priestly Brahmins, he says, they gain livelihood by sacrifice to the gods of fire, offering of dabba grass, Offering with a ladle, offering the husks of bran, of rice, of clarified butter, of all for determining, of lucky sites, for protecting fields for luck in war, by guessing at length of life and so on. Some Samana Brahmins gain their livelihood by such low arts and such lying practices. See, this low art and lying practice and superstition is not part of Buddhist ethos at all. Mm. If something has come in uh, Sri Lanka, if something has come in China, if something has come in Bhutan, uh, uh, you know, a kind of uh, superstition, that's a different course. Yeah. But in the original Buddhism, there is a main drive of women's equality. I'll just quote a small thing. Not from Sumangala. Sumangala was a very famous quotation. I am quoting from Matika, who was a very low caste woman. This is a poem from Terigata. Though I be suffering and weak, and all my youthful spring be gone, yet have I come leaning upon my staff, and climbed aloft the mountain peak, my little bowl overturned to sit I here upon the rock, and over my spirit sweeps. The breath of liberty I win. The breath of liberty I win. I win the triple law. The Buddhas will be done. This equivalent statement is nowhere in Rigveda, Yajurveda, or Ramayana, or Bhagavad Gita, anywhere. So that is where the Buddhist tradition can make an Indian state also a real secular state. That is what he is missing. He doesn't understand okay, so what he is trying to say in terms of religious differences, uh, where the spiritual ethic in terms of giving right to religion, right to read, right to learn letters, right to go to school. This was not there in Hinduism. Even today, it is not there in Hinduism. No, Dalit can become a priest in any Hindu temple. So, so I was asking, for example, at, you know, give uh, one temple priest uh, a right to priesthood in Tirupati or in Vaishnava Devi temple or in any one, one of the Hindu temples where you call Dalits Hindus, they don't give. So, so, so Kancha has a quite specific view there that in a way, uh, would it be fair to say, you, you see Hinduism as being unreformable. Uh, your position, Ajay, is perhaps a little different. You teach Hindu scriptures. Would you see yourself in some sense as a Hindu or would you have a similar act of rejection, or would you reject only certain parts of the Hindu traditions? I, I entertain your thoughts, Kancha, but I am not agree with you. First, how can, say, how can I say I am not Hindu? When my caste certificate proves it, if, if I don't know, uh, Kancha Ailea has written a book, Why I am not a Hindu. I don't know, but I think Kancha is with caste, he is not without caste. He is not claiming it, that he is not Hindu, but he has not, till he has not declared what he is. If you are not Hindu, then what who are? You are. I am Hindu because I have a certificate by the administration and who are telling themselves, new Buddhist, they all are Hindus because they are in that, that fold. 
because administration is giving them certificates caste certificates आप ये कहते हैं कि आप ये भी नहीं रहेंगे और उसकी सारी फैसिलिटीज अवेल करेंगे यू आर अवेलिंग द रिजर्वेशन जस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ द कास्ट इफ यू आर बुद्धिस्ट देन लिव रिजर्वेशन गो आउटसाइड वाई आर क्रिटिसाइजिंग हिंदू आई एम नॉट एडवोकेटिंग हिंदू यू आर अंडरस्टैंडिंग मी रॉन्ग आई एम नॉट हेयर टू एडवोकेट हिंदू बट द फैक्ट इज फैक्ट आई एम जस्ट टेलिंग द फैक्ट दैट All scheduled caste are Hindu. वो किसी भी धर्म में जाते हैं तब वो दूसरे धर्म के व्यक्ति होते हैं मगर वो वहां भी उनकी आइडेंटिटी देर आइडेंटिटी देर एज ए अनटचेबल वो उससे उससे लिबरेट नहीं होते हैं उससे बच नहीं जाते हैं आप कहते हैं सारी बात थ्योरी की आप कर रहे हैं I'm talking about टेटिस आप मुझे बताए कितने आ, जो कितने लोग हैं जो सिखिज्म में गए या इस्लाम में गए और उन्होंने हायर पोस्ट लिए हैं वहां पर रिलीजन में यू कैन काउंट दे मॉन ले तो प्रॉब्लम कुछ और है रिलीजन उसको सॉल्व नहीं कर रहा है मुझे लगता है अगर आप डॉक्टर अंबेडकर की भी बात करें तो उन्होंने सबसे पहले का एजुकेट वन मस्ट बी एजुकेटेड निरुप मैं आस्क यू डू यू थिंक दैट दिस डिबेट इज सीन टू मच इन टर्म्स ऑफ आइडेंटिटी इज आइडेंटिटी पॉलिटिक्स समथिंग दैट इज मच मोर इंपोर्टेंट नाउ देन इट वुड हैव बीन फॉर प्रीवियस जनरेशन यू नो आई एम लिसनिंग टू बोथ कांचा एंड अवधि विद ग्रेट इंटरेस्ट या एंड सिंस आई डू नॉट बिलोंग टू द दलित फोल I agree to some of both of them. What Kancha says that Hinduism denies them the complete uh, access to scriptures, to temples. You cannot touch them. When they convert, they overcome that. That is for certain. But I would like to mention two things about uh, what we have witnessed in Punjab. Uh, Lal Singh Dil's uncle was once selected to the Gurdwara to be the. president of the gurdwara committee or something like that in their town but the social pressure was so much that he was not allowed to do so that is huh? that is and then again um uh, ah uh, another thing which uh, uh, comes to me uh, so so that conversion even if it's not for uh, you know for a state or bigger but it is giving some dignity to the individual and we find a few lines from lal singh del when he converts to islam he writes uh, a letter to his friends communist friends you know lal singh del had the sikh identity singh was from the sikh culture and del was his uh, nom de plume taken from the persian or farsi culture mm. but in both folds he did not get his due either in the sikh fold or in the muslim fold or for that matter in the communist party fold where caste hierarchy was recurring at all these places and dil's wish his last wish over although he often said that caste prejudice is there among the muslims too but his last wish was that he be buried and not cremated uh, no one could fulfill that wish for him because the Cremation grounds are divided on basis of caste, upper caste villages. So the family and friends felt that they, if they insisted on the Muslims will not accept him, and if they take him to the another village, he will not be accepted. So why, uh, you know, dishonor his body? So let's cremate him the way we cremated all our elders at the scheduled caste cremation ground. And few lines from um, Dil. in which he sums up these are from a last poem written by him in which he says for us trees do not bear fruit for us flowers do not bloom for us there is no spring for us there is no revolution but i disagree with what ajay ji says to completely accept being hindu when when the hindu fold is not accepting you the kind of uh, um uh, slot we have put you in where you can't go to the temple you can't cross the path of an upper caste 
you will defile so and so. For that, some change is required. Okay. So, so I just, agree with just you. before we um, um, open required, up the discussion uh, to the audience, do you both want to very briefly respond on that? And just one other thing I'd like to ask is when Dr. Ambedkar wrote about the position of untouchables in ancient India, he had a very clear idea of Buddhists, Brahmins. Is that historically, factually correct? No, I'll just make one okay. point. That Gautam Buddha mm. chose a middle path for everything, for establishing a Sangha, for uh, working out the food uh, ideology in terms of violence and non-violence. Jainism was an absolutely non-violent religion, you know, not even uh, uh, inhaling insects. And at the same time, the Vedic religion was killing thousands and thousands of cattle in sacrifices and then, you know, food was being wasted all over, agriculture was not developing. Gautam Buddha chose middle path, Madhya Marga. It is in this that he stopped killing of cattle unnecessarily in the sacrifice and deployed cattle energy for agrarian production. That you can see the details in my book. <clears throat> now the question is, to have a modern democratic state, do you have ideals as one who came from your own ancestry, a Buddha, or a Hindu icon who really believes in caste, untouchability, inequality for women? That's the question. Now that's where some of us as writers, as thinkers, <coughs> keep saying, you reinvent the Buddhist background and reimpose, remap it on our modern contemporary society so that equality becomes the goal. And I don't agree that caste cannot be abolished. That is absolutely uh, a non-thinkable, not unimaginative kind of a situation. It could be abolished and equality can come to India. So we are hopeful. If he is not hopeful, that is a different question. Ajay. I am really very hopeful of it. It is a different way. It is a different way. I remember the Buddha. I agree with Buddha. I am not disagree with Buddha. But I am not agree with Buddhism. The practices of Buddhism. And I want to remember and want to underline Buddha did not allow slaves and dependent women in his religion. I think you know it. Why? And who were slaves that time? All untouchables? He wanted permission before conversion. Women, who were the women, they said to their husband, take permission. Who will give the permission? who is not independent and most of the women were not independent that time. So, Buddha ne unhe rok diya, stop them. Apne sangh mein aane wali wahi aur te thi, jinka koi tha nahi. Ab wo, chukki ab wo, us mein hai nahi, to wo baad mein, Buddha ne bahut dabao mein entry diya. In very pressure of Ananda. आप सोचिए जब बुद्धा ऐसा कर रहे हैं उस तो बाद में जब उसके बाद पूरा का पूरा बुद्धिज्म का जो रिचुअल्स सब खड़े हुए उसमें तो अनटचेबल्स आप आप याद करिए रिमेम्बर डेट जाता कथा वो एक कन्या है जो एक किसी चांडाल को देख लेती है और वो आंख धोती है जाकर बुद्धिस्ट Julie, will you just translate the very last points that Ajay made, the gist of that? So that Ajay is saying that... Um, In Jata Kathas, there is, a, there is a story. I just, I try to speak. Okay. One girl, is a Vanik girl, Vaishya girl, was going somewhere in a palki. And immediately she saw 
a chandal coming from another side. She stopped her journey and went back to the home and washed her eyes. Oh, he saw a chandal. She saw a chandal. What the Buddhist practice there? I am just asking you. It is not there. She is not Hindu. <laughs> Hindu. को मैं फिर आपसे कह रहा हूँ कि मैं ऐसा नहीं कह रहा हूँ कि हिंदुओं ने कोई अत्याचार नहीं किया है, मगर मैं बुद्धिज्म को उस तरह एक्सेप्ट नहीं कर पा रहा हूँ, एज अ स्टेट रिलिजन, जैसा आप कह रहे हैं सेक्युलर भी हो जाएंगे बुद्धिज्म के अंदर, आई नॉट एग्री। ओके, सो देवर देस क्वाइट clear differentiation of, of views on the panel. We'll now um, open it up to question and answers. And, and just Patrick, and I want yes. to say yes. something about untouchability. There is confusion of, about untouchability uh -huh. in India. In India, untouchability is not between upper caste and lower caste. It is among the Dalit caste. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Uh -huh. <coughs> um, Okay, so with the uh, the lady there, would you like to? Yeah. Uh, somebody, I think, will, uh, just behind. Sorry, there. In green with a little bit of red sleeve. Thank you. Uh, hi. Um, my question is. Uh, Actually, personally, I think we need to look beyond religion when we are talking about the emancipation of the Dalits. Because if we look at it, look at it in terms of either Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, whichever religion, because no religion is perfect, and I think that's a very personal choice whether a person wants to follow it or not. So we need to look beyond that, and we need to look beyond adopting the ideas of a particular religion into the state and then modeling a state on that background. We need to go beyond that. Okay. Secondly, um, sir, uh, Mr. Ajay, I want to ask you this question. You said you're talking about practicality. You're not talking about theory. And you mentioned really? this one point that if the Dalits want to get out of the caste structure, if they want to defy caste altogether, they should also defy the reservations that they are being given. Uh, do you think that's right because of the atrocities that they've been put through? Whether they are coming, uh, they, whether they are converting to Buddhism or Islam, and they are not being given equality, there are also all the okay. history, Th historical. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Yeah. We, we're going to take uh, yeah your question as well. We're going to take I think three questions and bundle them together, and then the audience members can uh, cherry pick their favourite bits. My, my first answer. point is uh, related to uh, 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 the Pali literature, where, which which you identify as original Buddhism. And uh, uh, there we see a constant undercurrent of Buddha taking pride in his Kshatriya lineage. And uh, there is that, that um, instead of the Dalit discourse or, or any support for the, uh, I agree that there is that principle uh, that, you know, Jati is uh, not there. Through karma you become a Brahmin. But, but the highest point is to is become a Brahmin. So that yeah, is there. So that undercurrent of casteism yeah. uh, is somewhere there. And uh, regarding the women, if we, you've mentioned, Ajay has mentioned a lot of points, but I would also like to add the eight Garud Dhammas that were uh, introduced for the women, and they have to bow down, whatever their age, a woman, a nun, has to bow down to a monk, however young he may be. Mm. And so regarding women, Buddha was a disaster. <laughs> the the third okay. point is uh, the third point is that the last point is that Dalits are not a not a homogeneous category. And Ajay did uh, touch upon it in the last point that why why in Dalit discourses the the discrimination within the Dalits is not addressed. Thank you. Okay, thank no, you. Uh, Those are three very, very interesting points that, that you raised. Let's have one one more question just to add in the gentleman there in the black shirt. Here's the question. I think he's asking. Uh, hi, uh, a friend of mine and I had we had a very random conversation one day and. It was. It came out as a prospect that the fight for religious supremacy is a fight between finding out who has the most powerful imaginary friend. So we need to understand that <laughs> religion is not a solution or an alternative to a statehood. So don't you believe? I, I would like. I would address this question to all the panelists. That don't you believe that it is about time that we look beyond the already prevalent religious mechanisms that have acted as failures for running states. Okay, so you've got everything, there, just, everything yeah. there from imaginary friends to the role of position of women in Buddhism and whether the Buddha yeah. himself enjoyed well, being a Shatya. Yeah. So, so each person in turn, but yeah. each country you start. You know, uh, the question that you raised, 
during Buddha's time, in Hindu the Vedic field, women had no ritual rights at all. And it was true that Buddha did not allow women's Sangha to be formed. But when Mahaprajapati asked the fundamental question, when you declared that human beings can attain nirvana, whether in the, within that human being women are also part or not, he, the whole thing was put to a Mahasangha and Buddha's resolution was defeated. That means he was democratically agreeing to admit women and they got. They were secondary to men, that's no doubt. But the first women's book in India was written by Buddhist woman called Terigatha. So that must be in comparison with what was there in the contemporary period, not at what is there today. Now the second question, what about the class question? What about the caste question? Now there is a chapter in my book on caste and class about what Buddha exactly thought. He debated about the division of labor. He said, one who makes a pot, one who makes a shoe, one who the, uh, tills the land, and one who prays the God, are they came or did they come, come out of different st structures of mother's body? They came from the same mother's body. They should be equal. Now this kind of discourse in spiritual realm, I don't think I read Vedas, I read Upanishads, I read Rama and Mahabharata, I did not find anywhere. Now that is the critical point for modernity to move towards equality. Now if you don't have an ancient egalitarian resource at your command, where do you land up? That is where Gandhi and Ambedkar seriously differed. On the question of Ramaraja, the Ramaraja versus Buddha Raja, were of fundamental differences in the Indian nationalist movement. If we don't understand that, we will be really missing the bus today. Okay, sir, we, we, do, sir, may we I ask do, not, please, one second. One we second. do not want Ram Rajya or Buddha Rajya, we want Lok Rajya. We want democracy. Very well, sir. No, it doesn't work that way. I would like to, uh, a young friend here said that it should be beyond religion. Uh, I would like to give the ray of hope that we have seen in Punjab, particularly the, ch uh, the Chamars, the Tanners, uh, who had uh, no land holdings, who were, but with the sports industry growing, they all set up their little entrepreneur units and came out of the fold of the landlords. Many of them went abroad, and you know, their one dream is that when they return, they build a big house in the village bigger than that of the feudal landlords. Also, they have kept their faith in uh, Guru Ravidas. And you will remember the Vienna killings when the Sikhs said, you can't call him Guru and you know, you can't. So very quietly, they removed the Guru Granth Sahib and they keep the Granth of uh, Ravidas in their temples. So they have shown there is a way out and I'm sure there's a way out for other sects. Okay, so we have a question. Uh, yes, you, sir. And sir. And, and so you, if you go first, and then we'll have another couple of questions. Uh, also, if somebody would like to bring a microphone. Yeah. You, you'll be next, huh? I, yeah. Sir, I already have the mic, so may I start? We are wasting time. No, no, please, 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 please. Hello. Distinguish all, all after this. Distinguish there you are. Please am I in the speak. queue? Although my question is different, but one thing I'll make it clear, relevance of religion is more than any of the discussion. Religion, religious practice can be failed, but not the religion. But my question is to Professor Kancha. Sir, there were so many options. Just tell us why Ambedkarji choose Buddhism only. Okay. Uh, why Ambedkarji? And why not Buddhism? Islam? Why Sir, only Buddhism? Yeah, thank, thank, please. Thank, thank, please, first. Yeah. Sir, at the very outset, I must inform the panel that I am an atheist. For me, all the religions are equal. I despise all of them. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that, let us be realistic, call a spade a spade. No religion in the world gives the equality to women. No world gives the equality to the weaker section. Now, discussing religion we should prefer is like discussing 
going back to cave time, dark ages, and discussing which cave will be better to live in. Okay. <laughs> so that's our yes. Can we can we think of a society? No. May I complete my question, sir? Very quickly, please, sir. Yeah. You don't like me, that's very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> we all adore you. Okay. <laughs> the fact is that the choice is between religions and atheism. Mm. If you believe in religion, then there is no problem. You can believe in any religion. Mm. It is like if you have decided to commit suicide, how does it matter how you are committing suicide? <laughs> okay. A great deal of reference has been made to Punjab and great deal of reference has been made to the Sikh religion. Mm -hmm. I think I am the only person here sporting a turban. Yeah. So I think I have the right to say, just <laughs> speak for a minute. That gives you the right to the yeah, microphone. Absolutely. 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 <laughs> uh, very briefly, I just like to say that there is just no casteism in Sikh religion. There is no casteism in Sikh religion. Uh, that, that we will discuss. Now, <coughs> when on 13th April 19, uh, uh, 1699, Guru Gobind Singh laid the foundation of the present form of Sikhism, the first five people who were baptized into the religion were all low caste persons. Okay. All five. And what he said was, Awal Allah no rupaya, Kudrat ke sab bande. Everybody belongs to this Kudrat. Ek noor te sab jog uptya. It is one light from where everybody is born. Kaun pale, kaun mande. There is no good and there is no bad. <laughs> now I would also like to say that an impression was created that in every Punjab village, there is another Gurdwara Sahib coming by the low caste, another Gurdwara Sahib coming by the Kabiriyas. It is absolutely incorrect. It, it may happen in some places. And what are those places? There are 15,000 deras in Punjab. 15,000 deras. And dera, what is a dera? Okay, dera is a I, place I, of influence. I, I think, sir, as we, we're a little <laughs> pressed for time now. Question, we'll question. take your, your point. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I would like to say one thing again. Uh, there is no casteism in... No casteism in Sikhism. Can I, absolutely. Can I just let, me, let, let me, let me, uh, let me let let respond. respond. <laughs> and Nirupam, if you'd like to I agree first. with you, sir. There's no casteism in Sikh philosophy. And it was Kabir who said, Awal Allah Nurupaya. And, uh, but in practice, much is lacking. I belong to the same Punjab. I'm a Punjabi. So this is what I have to say. So okay. I just Thank wanted to mention about atheism and religion. You know, there are 120 crore people in India. There could be few atheists, but entire people are still in the religious system. And when there is inequality in religion, when there is untouchability in religion, we can't go to all the Dalits and tribals and OBCs, you become atheists. That's not possible. So a writer, a thinker, it is not cinema. Life is not cinema. Not certainly in the cinema at all. So the question need to be addressed is that what is a democratic religion that people can think if they want to? That is where Abdekar's choice was. Given the British colonial rule, the anti-colonial struggle at that time, Gandhi was for Hindu nationalism, Nehru was for that, the whole nationalist period was for Hindu nationalism. There was Christian British ruling here. Muslims were fighting for their own rights. Ambedkar chose alternative Indian religious structure, that is Buddhism. Okay, and now that is the fundamental direction of Ambedkar. If we don't understand Ambedkar and he, is not, he has not become atheist, therefore he is not in he is not playing, uh, a, a, a writing a book like that or playing a drama like that. Thank okay? you very much. Ajay, if you could make a very brief... So one point. last question. No, we're, we're actually not going to have a, a hip-hop war of microphone versus microphone. Ajay, if you could make the final statement, please. I will say that this is a personal matter that he wants to go to religion. 
अगर उसमें बहुत सारे लोग जाना चाहते हैं तो जाएं। मैं दलितों के बारे में कहना चाहूंगा कि उत्तर भारत में नॉर्थ इंडिया में एक जाति के कुछ मेंबर्स ने बुद्धिज्म में कन्वर्ट किया है वो आप लोग जानते हैं मुझे कहने की जरूरत नहीं और साउथ इंडिया में भी स्पेशली इन महाराष्ट्र वहां भी एक कास्ट और मैं अभी अभी जानता हूं 20-25 साल पहले तक भी वो सब लोग वो हिंदू थे और मैं अभी बहुत सारे दलित राइटर्स की बात करता हूं जो वहां से आते हैं वो सब उसी हिंदू फोल्ड में हैं ये ठीक है मैं आपसे अग्री इस अर्थ में करता हूं कांचा एलिया कि बुद्धिज्म ज्यादा ओपन है अपने शुरुआती दौर में अब इस तरह अगर आप जाएंगे तो हिंदुज्म में जो वैदिक पीरियड था उसमें भी आपको कुछ ऐसे इंस्टांसेस इस तरह के मिल जाएंगे जहां काफी एक एक ऋग्वेद में एक जगह आता है वो कहते हैं कि मेरा मेरा एक भाई लिखने का काम करता है एक भाई किसान का काम करता है एक भाई ये करता है वो फैमिली है कोई अनटचेबिलिटी नहीं है आखिर आर्य समाज पूरा इसीलिए बना दयानंद सरस्वती ने यही किया जो वापस वेद की तरफ गए अब बाद में क्या क्या गड़बड़ हुई है वो तो आपके सामने बुद्धिज्म में भी है और इस्लाम में भी है और क्रिस्टानिटी में भी है इन कंटेक्स ऑफ इंडिया by drawing such a uh, conclusion or inference that all the dalits 20 crore people and the tribals and a large number of obcs are fools when they are questioning Not the very edifice of this structure are they fools in this country who are producing the food therefore they have knowledge i believe they are more than the intellectuals so oh, thank thank patrick you. i have a question can, can, we, are, can we know you and know your wife and know your mother in law you must tell me like a supplementary a supplementary supplementary please you must allow please. me a question please, please, please. The, there is a patrick here 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 there right here next to jamia sir may i no no i'll beat him we, we used to order no, no. swami only Sorry, only if you say here So hell, you have a lot of TV time here. Come on, <laughs> you can speak on TV, but we don't get to speak here. Yeah. You you can speak no, on, on TV. a serious yeah, note. Yeah, on a serious one note, one if the Jaipur Literature okay. Festival okay. Yeah. is about the freedom of yeah. expression, yeah. Yeah. and religion is lacking the freedom yeah. of choice, how do you justify yeah. being religious? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, okay. Well, well, sir, well, sir, my uh, on this dash today, uh, the Kancha started with proposing Buddhism. No, I propose that. Or at least, okay, okay, as a instrument of state, I want to ask something that, as far as religion impinging on state, but in our very Indian context, I would like the panel to answer this: that is the current parliamentary democracy as we know in India, with all the attendant stress on caste-based. votes etc mm -hmm. how is this perpetuating the caste system in india further okay so i'm going to yeah, leave because the leave. one answer is one answer is the present vote. democracy in my view is because hindu the, democracy because if, the, the, if it were to be a buddhist democracy it would have been entirely different but because of my great reverence for the organizers of the jaipur literature festival when i'm going to leave the stage and continue our conversation down here but thank you all very much for coming thank you nilu for that thank you rj and sir uh, thank you julie and i'll leave you with two thoughts only man is bad okay and the world is what it is thank you very much i i'm afraid the organizers have no um, one else for the stage one second please yes. i I'd, i'd like to take the chance to thank patrick and all our speakers i think a lot has been raised here and i'd like to i was just chatting with namita gokhale and the sir and she was saying that jaipur audience is fantastic It's thank true. you for your response and thank you for being so engaged <laughs>